Hello, and welcome back to Chris Mann's Waterfront Insights. In this episode, we'll be showcasing the primary canal that runs north to south through Punta Gorda Isles. This will be part one of a two-part series. Tarpon Inlet, part one. Welcome to Punta Gorda Isles. This is the northern entrance to the Tarpon Inlet Canal System. This video will cover the canal from the northern entrance down to the Marion Street Bridge. We will be cruising the canal at approximately four knots and we'll show you everything in real time. It will take approximately 10 minutes to get to the Marion Street Bridge. At the end of the canal is Colony Point condominiums coming up on our right. These are two bedroom, two bath units and range from 1500 to 1900 square feet. They do allow pets up to 35 pounds. To your left are the last few houses on Hibiscus Drive. This channel leads in from where the Peace River meets Charlotte Harbor. At the entrance of this canal, there are two almost 90 degree turns. I'm assuming this is to keep chop and waves out of the rest of the canal system. Directly in front of us before we turn is Aqua Court. It's a very small street and only has about 12 or 13 houses on it. As we come up to the first turn, you'll notice on the starboard side, your right side, the boat lifts that are associated with the Colony Point condominiums. As far as canal depths are concerned, since the entrance up to this point, it has ranged from anywhere from 9 to 12 feet. Another thing to know about canal depths, even though not very limiting back here, is the entrance to this inlet. The channel leading to this inlet is typically about 7.5 feet deep. Looking over the boat lifts, to your far right, you can see the rest of the Colony Point condominium complex. The canal will soon take a 90 degree turn to port, your left hand side, then it will follow Colony Point Drive pretty much in a straight line until you get to the Marion Street Bridge. This is the primary Tarpon Inlet Canal. From this shot, you can see just how long and wide the canal actually is. According to the Charlotte County GIS information, this canal is approximately 100 feet wide for the entire length of the canal. Well, at least up to the Marion Street Bridge. We'll cover the other side in the next video. For the remainder of this video, the houses on your starboard side will all be on Colony Point Drive. To your port side, this is the very end of Aqua Court Circle. After we pass this canal, the next street will be Bay Court. Something to note about Punta Gorda are there are a few differences between this neighborhood and other neighborhoods in Port Charlotte. One, you cannot have wood docks. Your dock has to be made of concrete. Two, you're allowed a boat lift, but you cannot have a boat lift cover. But the real real draw to this neighborhood, other than it's really fancy, are the seawalls. Because the owner of the property is not responsible for the seawall, the city is. So if you have any seawall issues, you call the city and you set up a work order. Anywhere else in Port Charlotte, you're responsible for your own seawall. And that can be anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a foot. We had a lot of seawalls fall down after uh, Hurricane Irma. So there's a lot of seawalls back here that are mixed matched because some withheld it and some didn't, and most of them have already been repaired at this, this point, but there's still a couple that I haven't. The next set of houses coming up on the port side is Rio Court. Rio Court is another small cul-de-sac and has about 10 to 11 waterfront properties on it. Today is a hot day in July 2019. Probably about 90, 92 degrees out. Feels more like 100. If you look off in the distance, you can see the, the clouds start to build. That's the typical afternoon sea breeze we get here. Um, right now it's pretty calm. If you look at the sea walls, 
It's probably between mid tide and high tide, more towards the high tide side. All of these homes are considered big power boat and sailboat water through the northern access channel. However, if you have a boat that will clear the 13 foot Marion Street Bridge, you will have much quicker access to the ocean by using the Ponce de Leon Inlet. The next group of homes coming up on the port side are on Luna Court. It is also a small cul-de-sac with about 12 houses. All of them on waterfront. The same as Aqua Court, Bay Court, and Rio Court. According to a 1977 article by the Washington Post, Punta Gorda Isles is described as a boating community on a network of canals that run into Charlotte Harbor at Punta Gorda, just north of Fort Myers. Established in the early 1950s, it is the sort of development that could not be initiated today because of stringent state and federal environmental restrictions on dredging. What this tells us is another neighborhood like this will never be built again in Florida. The canal coming up on the port side leads to Kingfish Lagoon and Tuna Bay. Tuna Bay is very misleading, it's just a very short canal. On Tuna Bay in Kingfish Lagoon, there are waterfront properties that are on Hibiscus Drive, Hibiscus Court, Bayshore Court, and also Coral Way. Speaking of Coral Way, the next 17 or so houses on the port side are all located on Coral Way. We've got a little time until we make the Bering Street Bridge, so to pass the time, I'll read an excerpt about Punta Gorda history. This excerpt is titled The History of Punta Gorda. It can be found on puntatacgorda.fl.us. The city of Punta Gorda was founded in 1884 on the instruction of Isaac Trebu. Surveyor Kelly Harvey began working on the subdivision of Trebu, and it was filed in Manatee County on February 24, 1885. The streets and blocks arranged along the southern shores of the Peace River at its mouth and on Charlotte Harbor. Every waterfront block was designated as a park, a legacy that serves the city to this day, with a string of public parks connected by a harbor walk, a 2.5 mile long public promenade, incorporated on December 7, 1887, after the arrival of the railroad and the construction of the Hotel Punta Gorda, the little city thrived on winter seasonal visitors, agricultural trade, and commercial fishing. Punta Gorda's fortunes ebbed and flowed along with the national economy and the Florida real estate cycle of boom and bust through World War II, when Punta Gorda Airfield was constructed to train air crews. After the war in the late 1950s, another boom began with new subdivisions platted with canals connected to Charlotte Harbor, and Punta Gorda Isles and Burnt Store Isles were born. These new subdivisions drew retirees from the north attracted by winter sunshine, bountiful recreational fishing, and spectacular boating opportunities. With a small town feel, waterfront parks, systems of pathways for walking and bicycling, and a collection of independent shops and restaurants, Punta Gorda continues to benefit from the preservation of its rich and unique history. Since we're talking about Punta Gorda and Punta Gorda Isles, we should probably talk about the translation of Punta Gorda. It just means fat point. Circling back to water depths, since we made the turn down the straightaway of this canal, back by the Colony Point condominiums, the depths have been a consistent 9 to 11 feet. We'll make Marion Street Bridge in the next couple of minutes. As you can see to the starboard side, there is still some new construction here. Not much, but there's some. And there's also a fair amount of empty lots.
Here we are on approach to the Marion Street Bridge. As you can see, the canal does get a little skinny, so I wouldn't recommend any two-way traffic unless maybe you're on a kayak or a sup or something like that. So if there's another boat coming, just give right away and take your turn. It'll, it'll make it much less stressful. The current can rip through here pretty quickly, so just, just be mindful of that. Also, the air draft or bridge clearance is 13 feet. If you can clear this bridge, there is another way out of the canal system, and that's through the Ponce de Leon Inlet. That leads straight into Charlotte Harbor and is much closer to the ocean, if that's the way you want to go. Please come back and join us for part two. This was brought to you by Christine Mann, Realtor.